everybody. It's time for this week's Throwback Thursday. My name's Dustin Walsh, a member of your Force Partner Specification and Controls team. And this week, we're taking a look at arguably the most ubiquitous product line in the entire lighting industry. I don't want to give it away, but I'll give you a few hints. This product is found on almost every single project and every building in the entire world. It's not a downlight, it's not a troffer, but if you guessed it, it's the exit sign. Today we're taking a look at Surelight's exit. Cooper has been a leader in the exit market for years and still offers updated variations of their legacy products. Most of the exit updates have come in the form of the light source. Most recently, the change over to LED from the original incandescent. Rather than looking at small incremental improvements of this benchmark product from Cooper, we have decided to take a deeper dive on the history of exits. There's a little known history regarding the design of the exit sign, and it's around the standardization of exits around the world. Just like any other design consideration, it wasn't without some controversy, including a conflict between Russia, Japan, and the United States. The current world standard is based on a single pictorial design. In the late 1970s, a Japanese fire safety group held a competition for a new exit sign design that was to become the new standard for the country. Yukio Ota created a design referred to as the running man, which is a pictogram based sign. This means it's understandable by everyone, even if you don't speak the local language. The design was one of 3,000 submitted and then was extensively tested under various conditions, including smoky rooms. Even then, the design went under numerous revisions, including changing the angles of the legs of the figure. They didn't want to convey running in an emergency, but in fact, running out of the door slowly. In the early 80s, the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, was looking into the standardization of graphical symbols for signs. According to ISO, a well-designed safety sign relies as little as possible on the use of words to achieve understanding. In other words, you don't need to speak the local language to understand how to exit a building. ISO considered OTA's design and a Soviet design that included a similar figure running out of a door. The primary difference being the Soviet runner included an image of a doorway. Ultimately, Ota's design won out due to the clear image of the runner. They felt seeing the door made the image of the runner difficult to see. Now, the running man or some variant of this exit is now in use around the world, except in the United States and a handful of other countries. In the U.S., exit signs have remained relatively unchanged since they were first put in place in the early 1900s. Exits initially came about due to a tragic fire in a Manhattan garment factory where the exits weren't clearly labeled. The fire pushed the NFPA, an organization which was created by insurance companies in the late 1800s, to come up with a standard to protect property and life safety requirements. In the 1930s and 40s, the NFPA developed a standard criteria for exits, which included size, letter heights, and published their standards, which were adopted by state and local governments. The standard included the word exit in all text, which is still utilized today. Robert Solomon, the Director of Building Fire Protection and Life Safety for NFPA, said in an article in Slate, the U.S. was more parochial then. He suspected that designers never considered whether foreign residents knew what E-X-I-T meant. There's even been debate regarding the color of the exit signs and their effectiveness, with some stating that green is the universal color for go and red is the universal color for danger. While NFPA doesn't mandate that a sign be red or green, some local jurisdictions like Chicago may have this requirement. While NFPA 101 doesn't forbid 
on exits. They also don't require them. Only requiring exits in the US to use traditional exit text. Solomon went on to explain to Slate that when NFPA investigates fires, problems never arise from people not knowing what an exit sign is. Instead, he argues, when they don't know where the exit is, it's because there was no signage there at all. Therefore, NFPA is mainly focused on having enough visible signs. In recent years, more pictograph signage is being used throughout various jurisdictions in the United States. So while the trend worldwide is a move towards the ISO standard of exit sign, the U.S. continues to utilize the exit text version of the sign. Our world travelers may notice when they're out traveling in other countries outside of the United States that the ISO standard of a pictograph exit sign is the primary choice to designate or show path of egress out of a building. To make matters even more confusing, locally here in Chicago, we are required to follow Chicago specific exit sign requirements. These include signs that are made out of 20 gauge sheet metal boxes and have glass faces. All of our signs are required to have red lettering on a white face. Letters and arrows of the exit signs and exit sign emergency light combos are mandated to be red. Directional arrows have to be beneath the sign lettering and the same width as the lettering on the signs. And all exit signs have to be internally illuminated. Let us know which side of the debate that you're on. Should the US move to an ISO standard, which is a pictograph based sign for path of egress? Or should we stick to the NFPA standard, which has been in use since the early 1900s and relies on the word exit? Until we finally solve the great exit debate, we've got you covered with Cooper's Surelight product line. I'm Dustin Walsh from the Force Partner Specification and Controls team. Please let us know if we have any questions about your next emergency or exit project.